Today we are starting a new series where we are reacting to the comments that we get on some of our social media videos. This was inspired by a post that we made a couple of weeks ago using Honest Abe's new song, Stuck on the Floor. Uh, I used it to create this meme about tragic rogue backstories. And the comments that we got on that video with tragic backstories, there were so many and they were so sad. So today we're going to read them, react to them. I haven't seen a ton of them because there's hundreds of comments. And we're also going to rate them one through 10. So it's going to be really fun. And we're hoping to repeat the series in the future with other things our comment section has shared with us because there's some fire comments out there. Yeah. And we honestly could probably do more than just these. I have 18 listed today. There was over 800 comments on that video. So I didn't comb through all of them, but these are some of the favorites that I saw from the ones that I did comb through. Okay. I'm so, ready. Let's go. All right. Number one. A fallen Azamar Oathbreaker. Devote, he was an Oath of Devotion paladin until his group came across a false Hydra. Now he's alone, and no one believes why. So, uh, I pulled up what a false Hydra is for the people who don't know. Yeah, uh, I don't know, so tell me. And it has like a fun little description. Okay. Imagine you walk into a small town. Everything seems alright, except it's a little off. The town seems pretty big. But you don't see nearly as many people as there should be. Dozens of houses lie empty, and everyone you ask says no one ever lived there. Animals keep freaking out unexpectedly. You trip over seemingly nothing. The False Hydra, if you're a Doctor Who fan, is basically the silence in a D&D &D monster form. It's not exactly weak, but it just has a few basic bite and claw attacks. Its real power is in its blind song, which makes everyone forget they ever saw the False Hydra when they hear it, as well as anyone that has been eaten by the False Hydra. So all the people who are disappeared in this town are victims of this False Hydra. And so a fallen Azamar Oathbreaker, that he's alone from his party because his entire party was eaten by this False Hydra, and he doesn't know why, and nobody believes him why. That is sad. I feel bad because I'm like, I'm a little lost. I'm shocked I haven't heard about the lore of False Hydras more already. But it, it, I don't know. It sounds a little complicated to me. Mm. A bit complicated. I think it's a homebrew monster. I think it's... Is it? It's Skull, Skull Splitter Dice is the website that I found that little excerpt from. Huh. So, but I love a good paladin, fallen... Wait, fallen Azamar... Oathbreaker Paladin? Fallen Azamar Oathbreaker Paladin. So, <laughs> angst. Angst that's upon like, angst. <laughs> well, that's funny you say that, because I was about to say, like, that sounds like that's my me. thing. <laughs> my chemical romance and black eyeliner forever. So that does sound like a pretty classic emo style story. Um, I'm going to give it... E emo girl energy, too. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10 just because the only gimmick I heard with this was the false hydra that I don't know a lot about, admittedly, which could just be my own fault. And we can't start too high. Can't start too <laughs> high. All right. Well, number two is dealing with another Oathbreaker Paladin. So let's move right along. Love it. An Oathbreaker Paladin who gets his powers from his children's love. They went missing and he can't find them. Aww. That's yeah, so sad. Pretty sad. That would be a challenging D and D campaign. Yeah. If you didn't, if you were like lacking power from yeah. not having like, it I around. I don't have the love, and like you could like say I siphon love from external sources, but if the main source of your power is your children's love and you can't find them, you're not playing a paladin. You're playing a fighter with extra rules. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm really, I'm really curious if, like, how they role played that in the game. Did they actually have less power or not? Because honestly, that changes kind of the sadness level. I don't know, because in your gameplay, if you ended up just like playing a normal paladin, but like, oh no, but I have to find them. I just feel like the stakes aren't high enough for that yeah. to like weigh on my soul, even though it's still sad. I, w I would love to play, like if I was going to play this character, I would love to do something where it was like, nearly a paladin you know like we have the squire in our subclass that's like a mixture between a fighter and a paladin mm -hmm. and it, it's just a rework of the uh purple dragon knight and so i feel like if you played a purple dragon knight and you were like typically i'm a paladin but i'm playing a purple dragon knight because i don't have the power from the love of my children like i think that that's that's where it's like ooh, the juice it's there yeah. and like yeah. i'm here for it <laughs> yeah 
Uh, I'm going to give that one a uh, 7.9. I think we can do wow. better. Okay. I'm being picky. I like it though. I like it. These are some I'm a- <laughs> higher numbers though. Seven, seven's up there for ten. You yeah, know? yeah. That's good. That's good. Continuing on to number three, uh, a pixie bard in a village that was raised by sprites, and his wife, who was pregnant with child, used to make music together, was killed in the battle, and so this pixie bard stopped playing music until he found a magical lute that helped made him feel better. Because it made him feel her presence when he was playing. Now he goes around playing in taverns, not only for the audience, but also himself. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's sad. That's sad where it's like, I, I stopped I like- playing music for a long time. and But I think I, I like now, this like, one because yeah. you can see the cause and effect. Like, first of all, pregnant wife died in battle already like super sad start okay yes. super sad premise but then to add on that storyline and like the motive behind why he's a bard at this point is like heartbreaking i'm gonna give that one uh 9.1 9.1 <laughs> I, I i i haven't been submitting mine because i've been very much in agreement. i think your okay. your rating scores okay. are on point if yeah. i if i diverge i'll let you know okay though. okay sounds good 9.1 though i think that's great <laughs> All right, on to number four. My character was cursed to come back after death, losing bits of her memory every time. She wrote in a journal every day for thousands of years, dying and coming back again, forgetting her loved ones and the ones that she died for. All she had at the end of her life was a book with her life in it. Oh, sad. Was she dying and then coming back with yes. less memory mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it was still her same life she was still the same yes. person mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay okay i think that is really sad but it's one of those things where it's like ignorance is bliss well i don't know did the character was the character reading the journal and then realizing oh this is my life and i don't remember it or was it more of like an ignorance is bliss thing where it's like yeah i don't remember i feel like you watch a lot of shows where a character's memory gets wiped yeah. and they're kind of like la da 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 like they're kind of fine but at the same time if you if you had glimpses cuz you know when you get the deja vu moment like what if you had that deja vu moment and then you started like you know like the 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 prophecy is true you go into the the raven the raven baxter far stare yeah. and you start remembering all these life things and it's like yeah. this is a life that i don't have that i lived and yeah. like that memory i feel like would start to burden you after yeah. a while yeah it reminds me of 51st dates which there's a oh, reason why that's, that's a, a rom com you know yeah. it is sad don't get me wrong you know memory loss is is sad, is sad <laughs> but i feel like you couldn't make 50 first dates if the premise couldn't have been at least a little lighthearted and funny. Like it's not that dark. I Maybe that's love, what I'm looking for ooh, is I darkness would love, though. If like, like in 50 first dates, cause I don't know if this party's also coming back, I guess her party members are dying along the way, but say her current party realized that she was on this cycle and could like somehow do something to make it so that it, they either broke the cycle or like, like with Fifty First Dates, where it's like, "Hey, here's a here's an update on what happened in your past three lives." Mm-hmm. Anyway, like, mm-hmm. I think that that could be really cool. Uh, mm-hmm. What would you rate this? Six point nine. Nine. I feel like it's pretty nice. sad so far. Okay. No, it's fine. That's fine. Some of these aren't like as sad as others. I feel like you're looking, like you said, you're looking for dark. You're not. Yeah. Like, are different types of sadness. I'm like, oh, that's that's like emotionally pulling at my heartstrings and you're like i want i want it to crush me like i feel like that's the i need to be on the brink of tears okay okay now now we know where our scores differ okay (laughs) number five my character was a goliath barbarian he couldn't save his little brother from a forest fire when he was a kid so he buried his grief with rage that is really sad. That That's like classic barbarian story. And I'm not judging these based off of how like common these stories feel. Because I don't feel like that's incredibly original. I would... I feel like that's pretty dang original. Like, to me, that gives off like, I started my life as a ranger. Or as something... Like, I was on a path. And... Because this event happened, it changed the rest of my life. Maybe why I don't feel like it's super unique is because I had that character. 
I had an artificer oh. who found a reason to rage and then became multi-class barbarian and only took levels in barbarian after that. That is that. true. So, yeah. But I still think it's sad. And I'm going to give that one a 7.6. 7.6. All right. I would I would agree. 7.6 seems pretty justifiable. Next character. I wanted to make a rogue whose parents were alive and funded his rogue training. Love it. <laughs> love it. I love breaking the stereotype. But I love that Not tragedy only... is about to hit. So tell me more. That's it? That was the whole comment. <laughs> That's the whole comment. <laughs> <laughs> not only did they break the stereotype with rogues they also broke the stereotype in the comments by being like what if i was just happy instead <laughs> I and like, i loved it that, I was that's like, me that's... being like and <laughs> and <laughs> nothing that's the end well i'm gonna give that a zero but i loved it <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for the comment all right, next character, a tabaxi blood hunter. His ancestors were pushed out of their home from a vampire attack. He was forced into the blood hunter clan to get revenge. He joined a blood hunter clan, which blood hunters are like a vampire, or not vampire, a, a monster hunter, like think yeah, the yeah, witcher. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the type of class they are. So he joined a group of basically the witcher in order to... Uh, kill these vampires and seek revenge i feel so bad i feel so jaded right now because i'm like mm, is that that sad i mean it is sad if any of these things happened in real life it would be so sad Tra tragic but it's like i need an arc we need we i need don't know ginger you know how like you eat ginger between sushi like we need to cleanse our palate somehow between every single so we'll watch the b movie between every <laughs> single one that's the perfect palate cleanser i mean jerry seinfeld did amazing work in that movie <laughs> and no i don't need a palate cleanser i need tragedy and i feel like a revenge arc is like not the saddest character backstory i'm also kind of like yeah you go get that revenge and i'm like good for you you know and i'm yeah. not like oh, oh no oh, you no. know it's almost like they're getting justice that's yeah. my hope i feel that so i'm gonna give that one a 6.5 6.5 hey it's not your lowest one you rated one zero so <laughs> i mean it's if anybody who saw this video watches this and feels like I'm belittling their character backstory. They're going to come after you with the comments. They're like, Brooklyn doesn't like no, my character. I, I literally would want them to. I would want them to tell me that I'm being rude. I don't know. I don't know what I want. This is fun. We're having fun. <laughs> I think you'll like this next one. So okay. this next character, a furbolg warlock, pact of love, which I'm assuming is homebrew because mm -hmm. I don't know it. Mm -hmm. Uh, after watching his wife be killed in front of him, their love granted him power, and he now fights to avenge his wife with love. Mm. So this is really similar to the other one, but the difference is ancestors, right, was the other one? Ancestors. And this one is yes. your wife. So it yes. feels like a little more connected. So it, that does that does tug on my heartstrings a little bit. But also... It's the revenge arc. You gotta, you Somebody gotta, I love died. You gotta check under your eyes how much salt, like, what's the, your saltometer for, from your tears? <laughs> oh, I, I was like, what do I have? <laughs> salt from tears. No, not yet. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm gonna give that one a seven and a half, because I do feel like it's, like, a chunk sadder than the other one, but also, like... A little again a bit simplistic and you go get that revenge and you have those special warlock powers now like that's terrible <laughs> that's terrible <laughs> well uh now let's go let's go for another palette cleanser here with our next character okay this this video makes me want to make a rogue with a perfectly normal, well-adjusted childhood with loving, caring parents that's completely just a kleptomaniac. Can't stop himself from taking anything not nailed to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what's your tragic backstory? My parents love me. I just really like stealing stuff. <laughs> I want to give this one like a two. A okay? two? Because 
That's so sad. That's sad that like you ma had to make those bad life choices and then you have to ruin people's life when like you should have been capable of not being that guy yeah. kind of a thing, you right? You had the support and something else got mixed up there along the way and it's like, okay, what? where was the off offshoot that made you like this is it innate you know yeah yeah so like almost a, a tinge of sadness a tinge a little sprinkle a little yeah. a little sprinkle of salt under your eye right no there. no salt oh no salt not yet <laughs> okay <laughs> next character an exiled barbarian life cleric he was exiled because his brother was kidnapped by an oni when he was 11 and his herd thought him to be weak and Oni is a genie in D&D. &D. Like, it's like an evil genie kind of thing. Being of great power that took his brother away. And then when he went back to his clan and he was like, I lost my brother. His clan was like, well, like, you were too weak to protect your brother and therefore you were not welcome. Yeah, that that's that's sad. That's really sad. Because it's, it's, like, it's like a double whammy. Yeah. You know, losing your brother and then being rejected by everyone. Yes. And you're literally left with nothing when you lose, like, your entire community and a family member. And it's like, where do you even go from there? So that, to me, that's like a dark night of the soul kind of a moment where it's like, I have nothing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give this one a 9.3. Mm, chef's kiss. 9.3? Is that your highest rate? Yes, it is. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. Well, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Next character. One time... I played an animated toaster who only woke up when he fell on the counter onto a magic gem. Is that is that the plot of Brave what? Little Toaster? What? <laughs> is I haven't seen Brave Little Toaster since I was like oh, seven. Really? No, no, oh, I've okay. seen it. I watched oh, it a gotcha. bunch. I haven't seen it, so oh. I've just heard you talk about it. So I would just be shocked if you were like, "You're a brave little toaster," and I'm like, "What?" And you're like, "I don't know. <laughs> it's just something people say." <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I'm very confused by that comment. Uh, I'm going to give a big old N slash A and say, I don't know. I'm going to give you one brave little toaster. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's the, the rating. rating. <laughs> you get one brave little toaster on the sad. Congrats. Scale. Very nice. <laughs> Continuing on, my cobalt gunslinger started the game with all of his friends and family he ended the game with no family and was on a different world with a team of strangers. The thing that I really liked about this one, mm -hmm. that gives me like Guardians of the Galaxy vibes where it's like Star-Lord has nothing and he goes with these with these alien spoilers for uh, for Guardians of the Galaxy if you haven't seen good it. Job, I guess. Good job, good job, good job remembering. Because uh, <laughs> his mom dies at the very beginning and that's why he decides to run away with um the guardians of the galaxy or not the guardian but that's how he gets to space and so anyway i just thought that that was kind of uh reminiscent of that and i think the guardians of the galaxy story is emotionally heart-wrenching mm, mm. yeah it is but i feel like part of what makes guardians of the galaxy that heart-wrenching is other things you yeah. know like it, there's a lot of depth there that is kind of missing here so it's like a good like a lot of these things i feel like are a good start but it's like, like but premise. what did this mean for your character what happens next what's yeah. yeah like what's the conflict that they you know how do they try to resolve it or what else goes wrong in their life that makes that even more challenging or whatever so i would say this is sad for sure but um could be sadder and therefore, I'm going to give it a uh, 8.4. 8.4. That's a good base. That's a yeah. good base. Uh, the 1.6 that's remaining, I feel like, could be made up with a little yeah. bit more detail. Yeah. And Feels again, generous. there could be more detail. I might have accidentally cut off a few of these because uh, they were multiple comments yeah. long. And sometimes you just, you, you don't find everything. <laughs> mm. So, next character. This next character was a Warforged Bard of the Swords. He spent the whole campaign desperately try trying to prove that he had a soul for his creator. Turns out he didn't. Oh! Isn't that oh. so sad? Oh. Like, you spent your whole life trying to prove something that ends up being wrong. To have, to have enough like, sentience oh. to know that that's a good thing, that you want to have a soul, yeah. that that makes you more valuable, that you feel yes. like you have to prove yourself, prove yourself to not for only its yourself, creator. Your creator. 
for your creator to know in their heart of hearts, in their actual soul, that that's not the case. I give that it a 10. is, I give I give it. A 10. I give it a ten. Also, this reminds me of Westworld, which is like <sighs> top three best shows I've watched in my entire life. Probably will not ever be beat out from that top three spot. I think. Yeah, I so. love Westworld. It, <sighs> highly recommend. I wonder if it's inspired by Westworld. I wonder. If not, then they really need to watch. Again, some of these could have <laughs> could have some really like big influences. Nine point nine. I'm sorry. I think they're sadder out there, but it's by far my favorite. Well, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree, and the court overrules it because it's, it's still a <laughs> robot, right? Like it's a sad story, but at the end of the day, you could it never had a soul for this oh, robot. Oh, a hundred percent. That's why I'm giving it a nine point nine. But like, <sighs> like I'm gonna. A, a human a deserves a 10. Robot. No, no. Robots, I love like Warforged and Autonomes and like any chance I get to play a robot in a and d campaign, like I'm going to do it. And I love like making little robot voices. So I'm a robot stand though, I guess. So <laughs> 10, you get one from me. All right. This next character is a turtle druid circle of the wildfire. He lost his wife in a forest that burned down his entire home. Woke up connected to the spirit that started that fire. That is very interesting. Very interesting. P- we're not ranking this, but points for uniqueness. Like, yes, I feel like that's... Lots of flavor yeah, in that yeah, one. Yeah, the premise for that, I'm like, oh, I'm intrigued, you yeah. know? Like, definitely doesn't feel too basic. So, mm-hmm. props to that. Um, definitely sad, for sure. And I'm going to give it an 8.9. 8.9. I think that's fair. All right. This next character. I'm a rogue slash weather mage but i can't control the weather so it's constantly raining on me what's her name i think it's tia is it tia or is is, is it tia something because she's yeah. the ant yeah i think i think but it's... The, it's the ant from encanto that i yeah. think of with like the rain cloud over mm-hmm, her head mm-hmm. i love we we love that's that like movie. that's like sad and would be really annoying, but like kind of sad in a cute way. Like it is in the show, yeah. you know? It's like, oh man. Also, if it's raining on you all the time, that does make me think maybe, may, I don't know if it goes along with emotions, but maybe she's sad all the time. And that would be kind of sad. It would be sad to like have a huge, you know, like, like written tell. on your yeah. forehead like that no you're sad. Yeah, yeah. You which is like how it. it is in Encanto in too. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I love that idea but sadness level, I don't think it, it's that high. So I'm going to give it a six and a half. But like, no hate, you know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Love it. Moving right along. I was a half elven rogue whose father left, causing their mother to snap and become fixated on her son because he was all that she had left of her father of his father he's essentially a captive of his mother's overprotectiveness mm this is like some some real world yeah well also can you imagine like you know how like there's like the dmpc effect but like this is like no my mom's chasing me and so either she's like a bad guy or i'm guessing she's part of the party like can you imagine having your mom like be a helicopter parent as an NPC in the party being like, Hey, make sure you, you cannot go into the front line of the battle. Like I forbid it. Like I forbid you to that kind of adds a little bit of like a fun dynamic. To the yeah. Party, yeah. Sure. It's like sad. I don't think it's like a tragic backstory. It's almost more just injustice. It's like messed up for you. It's like a conflict that needs to be resolved, but not as much like a, a sad backstory. Besides the fact, I mean, still his, his, his dad died and his mom yeah. lost her husband. So again, I have a skewed sense of what's sad. We didn't take case. a ginger between, so we didn't watch the entirety of the B movie. I guess. So there's no I guess. palate cleanser there. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna give this one uh 6.9. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, our last character for the okay. night. Okay. My character was evil, but he was trying to do better and lost his daughter along the way. So he did unspe- he did the unspeakable to bring her back and now she wants nothing to do with him ooh there's some layers to there's play with here layers. i love a villain arc everybody yeah. does right they're very popular mm-hmm. right now but i love that he was really he was maybe not in a great spot 
really trying to get better like yes that that pushing that direction from like evil to good is really cool but then to be like kind of slingshotted back due to that experience and still super sad and if you're gonna have a villain backstory like sad is the way to go in you my know, opinion you know what that reminds me of now that i now that we say that out loud i'm mm-hmm. seeing connections like mm-hmm. uh, which mm-hmm. is great in the backstory Dr. Horrible from Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. Oh. Spoilers for Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, I guess, a little bit. Oh, but yeah. Yeah, like... Which is a sad, is sad, sad film. I love it. Yeah, Neil Patrick Harris, you should watch it. It's it's a great movie. I guess this is turning into our TV show and movie recommendations. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> but they're all great recommendations. They're all great recommendations. Ooh. But there's reasons that we think like this with these characters I feel mm-hmm. like it's because like they have a really great basis and they might be basing it off of these but even if not yeah like they they see the tropes in media and they're following it yeah. so well and well I think and they and they job. are tropes I don't feel like a lot yeah. of the ones we've liked you know I don't feel like they're cliche yeah. like they're extremely overused right uh, like I don't feel like this one is overused at all and no. so it's like okay even if they whether they did or didn't base it off of Dr. Horrible or any other character it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's a great story. And yeah. it, it's not worth your time trying to tell a brand new story that nobody's yes. ever told. That is a silly thing to pursue. And very hard to do. Like, yeah. the thing that makes a story unique is you. And sometimes you can have seedlings from other pieces of literature or otherwise that you could put into your own media that it's like, this is a character. And then... Like, because you put yourself into that character, that character becomes very fresh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I think that's one of my favorite things about backstories is the fact that, like, yes, you could bring a backstory to the table, but that backstory is going to kind of, like, have this chemical reaction with your personality and make such a cool character. And that's Mm -hmm. why the characters that you make are so original. Yeah, I love that. Preach. Preach. That was fun. Really good. And there's... oh. There were so many more. I, I, I only got, oh. that's again, I probably looked through 50 to get 18. Oh, see, that kills me. And I know, I know I there's got to be other like 9.9s in there yeah. kind of a or thing. Tens, you know? Yeah, I'm sure there we is. Should go through, we should go through the video again. And maybe we could do a part two to this. Yeah. Yeah. Worth it. That'd Patreon be awesome. content, maybe. Maybe. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for this special bonus episode if you like this episode going over to patreon.com forward slash knocked and check out some of our bonus shows where we might have more from this on our patreon thank you again for following us on social media and for everyone who submitted thank you so much you absolutely rock thank you for being a fan of our show and we hope that you remember when life knocks you flat on your back all you got to do is keep rolling and And we we hope hope you have have a wonderful wonderful rest rest of of your your day oh We did two different ones. That's fine.